I wonder if you could just comment on the difference between witnessing one's thoughts, perceptions, feelings, and being engaged in one's thoughts, feelings, and perceptions. There are really, you give two possibilities, witnessing your thoughts, feelings and perceptions or being engaged with them. There's a third possibility and that is being identified with them. So those are the three possibilities. Witnessing thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions, and being engaged with them and being identified with them. So, for instance, you and I are now engaged with our thoughts. Yes? We're not necessarily identified with them. That is, we are not necessarily deriving our sense of identity from our thoughts. Correct. We can perfectly well be engaged with our thoughts as we are now and know that what we are is not itself a thought. In other words, to be engaged with thoughts is not necessarily to be identified with them. And to, to witness one's thoughts is to, to know oneself as the knower of one's thoughts. So your thoughts are appearing to you. Even since we've been having this conversation, several thoughts have appeared and disappeared. You are that which knows your thoughts. You haven't experienced yourself appearing and disappearing several times over the last few minutes. Yes, You've experienced your thoughts appearing and disappearing several times, but you remain present as their witness or their knower, as that which is aware of them. So... It is possible to know your thoughts, to be engaged with your thoughts, but not to be identified with them. So the witness position is usually suggested in the Advaita tradition as a, as a halfway stage or as an initial stage. And the reason it is suggested is because normally most people are completely identified with their thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions. We don't just think and feel. I am aware of thoughts and feelings. We think and feel I am my thoughts and feelings. We don't just feel I know the experience of sadness. We feel I am sad. So uh, to counteract this identification of ourself with our thoughts and feelings that the teaching says first of all no take a step back see that you are the witnessing presence of awareness in the background and your thoughts and feelings are objects that appear to you in the foreground so there is this separating process previously we were totally identified with thoughts, feelings and sensations, in other words, with the mind and the body. And in order to overcome this identification, the teaching says, no, see that you are that which is aware of the body-mind. The body-mind is your object. It is not the subject. Awareness is the subject of experience. The body-mind is the object. Are you with me so far? I'm with you. Yes. That's from a, a Jungian standpoint, identifying is kind of like the persona. Don't, don't try to marry what is being suggested here with, with Jungian psychology. Jung, 
may have used some of the same words, identification and persona, but but with a different meaning. So it's not suggesting there's anything wrong with the meaning that he ascribed to those words, but they're not necessarily the meaning that I ascribe. So that's why I'm careful in this way to to define the way that I use words. Identify, it it, it um, comes from two Latin words, ideo and ficio. Idio meaning the same and ficio meaning I make, to, to make the same as. Identification means to feel the same as. In other words, if we're identified with our thoughts and we feel and feelings, we we feel that we are the same, that what we are is the same as thoughts and feelings. In other words, I am, what I essentially am, is this body and mind. And conventionally we feel I, the body-mind, is the subject of experience, and others in the world are the object of experience. Hence, I, this body-mind, knows you, that body-mind, or that world. So the first step the teaching takes is to say, no, it is not I, the body-mind, that knows the world. It is I, awareness, that knows the body-mind world. The body-mind is the object of experience, not the subject of experience. So. We're still in duality here. We still have a subject and an object, but it's no longer the body-mind as the subject and the world as the object. It's awareness that is the subject, the witnessing presence of awareness, and the body-mind world that is the object. And the purpose of doing this is to draw attention to the fact of awareness. To the, to the fact of what we essentially are. What we essentially are is that which is aware of our experience. I am aware of my thoughts, but I am not made of thoughts. I am aware of feeling and sensations, but I am not made of a feeling or sensation. I am aware of perceptions, but I am not made of a perception. I am just made of pure being and knowing. Being and awareness or consciousness. So that's the first step, but it's only a, a halfway step because it still leaves us with these two things, the subject of experience and the object. Then a further step is needed to then revisit the objects of the body-mind world and see that they don't just appear to this witnessing presence of awareness. All experience appears in awareness. And then the further step, experience doesn't just appear in awareness, it is made of awareness. So that, but by this stage, we've collapsed the apparent distinction between awareness and its objects. In fact, there was never a distinction between awareness and its objects. The only reason the witnessing position was suggested was to, as an antidote to our previous belief, I am the body mind. In reference to that belief, the teaching, uh, uh, part of the skillful means of the teaching is to say, okay, separate yourself from the body-mind. See that you are that which is aware of it. And then, having done that and established, I am the presence of consciousness, we then explore the nature of that consciousness. It's not enough to just discover, I am consciousness. There's a further step that is required to discover the nature of that consciousness. Having discovered that, we then return to the body-mind world and find that the body and mind world are, are not just appearing to or in consciousness, but as consciousness. It, they are made of consciousness. They are made of infinite consciousness. And then, so the, the witnessing position is a, is a halfway stage. It's a necessary stage to take, but at some stage we need to go further than that and go back to the objects of the body-mind world. So to, to, to be identified with the body-mind is to consider 
I am not pure consciousness, I am made out of thoughts and feelings, then this disidentifying process takes place, then we can go back to the objects of the body-mind world, we can be engaged with them again, as we are engaged now with thoughts, sensations and perceptions, but we no longer feel, I am this cluster of thoughts, feelings and sensations called the body-mind. Okay. Thank you.